Today we have Tracy Hutcherson with us, and Tracy is a former and very fine microbiology student who's now in graduate school, and he's going to demonstrate a few of the basic techniques that you'll be doing in the lab in the next few days. The first thing I want to emphasize is that in an ideal setting we would all use sterile laminar flow hoods, but in reality we end up doing a lot of our bacterial work out in open air situations. So the main emphasis here is going to be on keeping the environment sterile. Now let's introduce the tools of the trade there, Tracy, and we'll start with the inoculating loop. Okay and then there's an inoculating needle which looks very much like the, the loop and then sterile pipettes which we won't open yet until we need them and then we have the micro pipetter and the micro pipetter has a digital readout on it and we pre-programmed that digital readout to a hundred microliters that's millionths of a liter and he'll use sterile tips that are disposable on that. We also are going to be working with sterile nutrient auger plates, which we poured yesterday. And then we have some sterile uh, broths in the uh, rack. And then we have various cultures that we're going to be working from. And the organism we're using in all of these is E. coli and we will, he is using precautions as far as goggles and gloves. All right, so let's get going here. Uh, let's show them our starter culture first. Okay, so if you just open that plate so they can see the growth that you have on that plate already. Okay, and that's a 24 hour culture. So he's going to light the butane burner here. Oh, that's great and he's going to sterilize the inoculating loop. He's going to sterilize it red hot on the tip at the top of the blue cone and then run it, run the length of the wire through the flame one time to sterilize it. Now he'll come over and get a sterile auger plate. And he's going to now go back to his starter plate and get some bacteria off the starter plate on the loop. And then clamshell his, his plate and simply put a spot of bacteria in the middle and that's it. And he'll re-sterilize his loop. Okay, now we're going to do a simple streak, and he's going to reclaim the loop. Go to the starter plate and pick up organisms. Now I heard a little sizzle there, and so he heard it too, so he went to another plate on place on the plate to get some organisms. He's clam shelling the plate. That means opening it just enough to work on it, drawing a Z and closing the plate, reflaming the loop. Now we're going to do a streak isolation plate. Very similar to the streak plate, except that we'll do multiple streaks on the same plate. And the idea is to eventually isolate individual colonies. All right, so he's getting some bacteria from the starter plate. Now watch what he does. He's going to take a, a clean auger plate and he's drawing a Z close to one end, close the plate, reflame the loop. Now he's going to come back and make sure you allow some time for that loop to cool. He's going to come back and draw a line partly through what he just put on the plate. All right, and then draw a Z again, reflame, and do the same thing one more time. That's that fine. All just let it cool for just a second. Okay. And now he'll do one last streak drawing through from where he had worked before. And once we grow these cells in the incubator, you will see isolated colonies in that third area. All right. So 
let's move those plates to the side. So now we're going to do an auger stab. And to do that, we're going to start with an inoculating needle. He's going to let it cool, and then he's going to get organisms from the plate and actually stab it into a tube of solidified auger. So this is not a tube of broth. Show them that, that it's not mobile, that it's actually solidified. There you go. And he'll stab that all the way down into the auger and then reseal. And we do that to test for oxygen requirements of the microorganism. Now we want to use a broth to inoculate a plate culture and show them first the um, broth with the, the inoculated broth. There we go. So we have E. coli cells that are growing in there and you can compare that to a tube of sterile auger, uh, excuse, excuse me, you can compare that to a tube of sterile broth and see the cloudiness that indicates the growth. So Tracy's going to open a sterile pipetter. And he's going to remove approximately one quarter of a milliliter of the broth culture and he's going to transfer that to a plate culture. Sometimes it's difficult when you're holding so many things at one time to keep things sterile. But notice he's trying to keep things capped as much as he can. He's trying to hold lids uh, open side down so that microorganisms do not settle in there. So now he's going to drop that straight onto the middle of a plate of clean auger. Cover it. Dispose of the pipette. Now there's the matter of spreading those cells out on that plate. And for that, we're going to use an L glass rod. And this glass rod is sitting in a beaker of alcohol. We're trying to keep the alcohol at a distance from the burner because it is flammable. Now notice what he's going to do. The, all he's trying to do is just basically light the alcohol on fire and not not heat the loop red hot. Now he's spreading the cells and he's going to twirl. He's actually going to twirl that L around on the plate. He's going to actually twirl that L around on the plate, spread the cells, and then cover the plate. He'll re-sterilize the L glass rod. There's another way to spread cells besides using the L glass rod, and that is using sterile glass beads. And so in this case, he could put a few beads, doesn't really matter how many, just a couple of beads on the plate, and close the lid and swirl. The beads roll around, spread the bacteria, and then he can just dump the beads into the trash bucket. Sometimes we save the beads and re-sterilize them, but we won't worry about that today since we only have a few beads. All right, here we go. Now we're going to work from the plate culture into some sterile broth. And we'll go back and use the loop again. some cells on the loop. All right, now take a sterile broth too and show them how you would stir those cells into that broth. He's going to actually spin that loop. Notice how he's holding the tube on its side so that dust from the air doesn't fall down into the tube and contaminate the broth. He's going to cap the tube, that's his priority, and then he will reflame the loop. Okay.
Another tool that we can use to transfer cells is this micropie pattern. And of course we have it preset. Now he's going to withdraw some cells from the E. coli tube and simply put them on the plate the same way he did before. All right, so that shows you some tools that we can use in the microbiology lab, and all of you will get a chance to do it just as well as Tracy did it uh, this week in the lab. Now Tracy's going to label these plates, and notice how he labels the bottom of the plate because the lids could get separated from the bottoms after we incubate them. And we usually put the name of the organism and the date. Tracy, thanks so much for, for helping us out today and demoing some of these techniques, and hopefully these students will be able to do these things just as well as you've done them. Thanks.